Leah Bond. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'm proud to rise on behalf of New Zealand First and speak to the New Zealand uh, Public Health and Disability Southern DHB Elections Bill. And this is because I reside in Invercargill. I, res I live in Southland. And on behalf of New Zealand First, we passionately oppose this bill. For those people at home that are in their cars and listening to this debate in the House tonight, um, the purpose of this bill, it seeks to cancel the 2016 triannual general election of the Southern DHB in order to provide until the repeal date for the continuation of the term of office of a commissioner for the Southern DHB. I have maintained throughout this process three main objections to this bill. First, this bill is an appalling affront to Southerners' democratic right to vote for their own district health board representatives. Secondly, we knew very little about the work done by the current commissioners back then, but we were expected to take it in trust that they are going to do a great job, and now it's expected they'll keep that job until 2019. Mr Speaker, New Zealand First does not believe in railroading the democratic process simply to fulfil a cost-cutting exercise that has already shown a weakness in two areas, the lack of transparency and the questionable capability by the commissioner that has not gone unnoticed. And thirdly, the real culprit for the state of the Southern DHB, fiscal woes, is the government's terrible population funding formula and that amalgamation under that government of the Southern DHB and Otago DHB. New Zealand First believes in strongly holding the District Health Board fiscally accountable for the choices that they have made. New Zealand First objects to the government's uh, taking away the power from the people, stripping away the votes from Southlanders by this national-led government, placing all the decision-making powers in an unelected few, and that really concerns us. New Zealand First respects democracy, and this bill is an appalling affront to democracy. One of the basic principles in this country, and look up and listen, National, is the right to vote. So that's what New Zealand First is protecting in the House tonight, the right to vote. This is another example of this government putting all the power in the hands of a small unelected few because it believes it knows better. I maintain that the good people of South and Otago know their communities better. New Zealand First refutes the need to strip back democracy while an alternative solution exists. The Minister knows this himself, Mr Speaker, it was in the Minister's original plan when he sacked the board. And the Minister is quoted in the ODT from a press conference he held on June the 18th, 2015. And again, I feel the need to actually quote the Minister. The plan is really for the Commissioners to stay on as appointed members of that board and new elected members to come on at the local body elections. In other words, Minister Coleman, a new board. So what happened? What happened? What happened to that? What happened to your plan? The Minister said in the Committee of the Whole House, it is not legally responsible to follow through with his original plan, that he would have allowed for the Commissioners to be appointed to the Board and the remaining number of Board seats voted in the Local Health Board 2016 elections. He said there were no provisions in the Health and Disability Act 2000. New Zealand First refutes that because this is a new board, and the Health and Disability Act 2000 provides the Minister with the authority to appoint members onto a board, a new board, that would otherwise be held by elected members. So I want to put that myth to bed, and I want to say my SOP, Supplementary Order Paper, would have given the Commissioner, the Minister, Southerners, the good people of Otago, a win-win outcome, but that government voted it down. I would have addressed, uh, this would have addressed the complex issues facing the Southern DHB that would, have, uh, that would have not wiped out the need for this national-led government to strip the vote from the good people of Southland and Otago. There is a real fear, Mr Speaker, a real fear in our communities that the Minister will not follow through with his promise and allow us to vote for our health board in the 2019 elections. Southerners refuse to be another ECAN case study under this government, be given empty promises that are not fulfilled, 
and be forced out of voting for nine years like the good people of Canterbury have had to swallow. New Zealand First questions both the transparency and capability of this commissioner. This commissioner claims in her letter to the team leader of the DHB relations at the Ministry of Health that her aims were to engage with the communities in which they operate across the district. She claims to have held meetings with staff throughout Dunedin, Southland and Lakes District Hospitals, community and health leaders, all major staff unions, <clears throat> MPs and mayors throughout the district, and uh, mobile health solutions. And Mr Speaker, the list goes on. As a list MP for New Zealand First based in Invercargill, I was not invited along to these meetings. Neither were the public allowed to attend or observe any board meetings. And so I refute the claim the Commissioner has made absolutely, the Commissioner has been absolutely transparent. You can sit there and laugh, Mr Barker, but this is not a joke. This is not a joke. Going next year. So, and I, and I actually, I want to remind the Minister that the Commissioner was appointed in June 2015, yet failed to engage in any meaningful way with our communities until she was put under pressure by the Health Select Committee. Recently, that was too. And all of a sudden, here she is, out getting out there, holding all sorts of public relations expressions. Right. Order. Order. Um, I've done it to two members I previously. This, this is quite a narrow bill. It's not a bill to go over all of the issues. Mm -hmm. okay, I, I know so. we can't in the time anyway. Of okay. That, of that area. So I, I do want to point out that Southerners are actually totally fed up with the um, slow process, the secret dealings behind closed doors that we've had to date. The real culprit for the state of the Southern DHB's fiscal woes is the government's terrible population-based funding formula and the amalgamation under that government, um, under, under that government's watch with the Southern DHB and the Otago DHB. We know from cabinet papers uh, that were released that the rural adjusted calculation did not adequately fund the Southern District Health Board and, the, and that the District Health Board has missed out on the correct funding for many years, Mr Speaker. The population-based Funding formula does not support regional health care and is the real culprit as to why the District Health Board and so many others are struggling to stay fiscally sound. With such a, a huge geographical region to service, it's no wonder the Southern DHB struggles to meet its services needs. What constituents are telling us, what they're telling me, is that they are being bumped off the elective surgery list. That's one way to cut back the deficit. Forget about looking after our elderly. And God forbid, if you're slightly overweight and need, and need a knee replacement, you have to go home and lose the weight first. Another way to cut the deficit is to contract meal services out to private contractors like Compass and the 15-year uh, contract to feed our patients in hospitals and members of our community through the Meals on Wheels contract. And despite the outcry from members of the public in Dunedin and in Targo from doctors refusing to eat in the cafes... Order. Order. I am going to interrupt the uh, member again and advise her that she has to... At least it's a third reading, it's quite a narrow debate, and she's mm -hmm. got to somehow tie her comments to the bill. Rhea Bond. Okay, well, I'll do that. Um, this contract will not bring the $7.6 million um, needed originally uh, to, to save the DHB. So, in a report released by the Medical Council just yesterday, it was printed in the ODT, and it does state uh, that House officers at Dunedin Hospital were overworked and lacked supervision, which has put the accreditation training into doctors at risk. I do ask, how is that? How is that competent? So, in closing, Mr Speaker, this is a bad, bad bull. It is bad for Southlanders, it is bad for Otago people, and it strips away our democracy. There are decisions that have been made behind closed doors, and it doesn't deal with the real issue, inadequate funding. Now, New Zealand First, we've stuck to our guns and we've opposed this bill from start to finish. Two wrongs don't make a right, Mr Speaker. Thank you. Mr Speaker.